from Hustle Sheets, and today I want to do a quick video showing you guys how to combine data from a different spreadsheet. Now, this question came from a video that I made was how to that was called how to combine rows from different tabs. So we had different tabs, if you can see over here, we wanted to basically stack the columns on top of each other, right? Um, and then so this guy, uh, Jonathan, uh, basically asked, how do you combine? How do you do this from other workbooks and spreadsheets? And um, I basically told him to use import range. So the reason that a lot of companies and a lot of my clients need to know how to do this is because what happens is they want to like the best example I can give is they want to give each salesperson their own spreadsheet. And then they want to be able to have each salesperson have access to one individual spreadsheet. They can't see others, but then they want to have a master workbook where a spreadsheet that they can basically combine and see all of the data of every single um, every single salesperson, right? So I've made three spreadsheets here. Uh, one's called what spreadsheet one, spreadsheet two, spreadsheet three. Basically, has the same exact data. Now, what you would do, it's the same thing as the, this um, as this video. So if you haven't seen this video, make sure to watch this video. I'll leave a link below. Um, but basically we're gonna use, the only difference is we're gonna add an import range first. And what import range allows you to do is, let me zoom in, import range allows you to pull in data from a different workbook. So import range, right? And then what you do is type in the spreadsheet URL inside quotes, don't forget the quotes, and then the tab, and then the, um, the cells that you wanna bring in. So in this case, I'm just gonna go ahead and copy, copy this link up here. And then it's called sheet one, and then it's going to be from A1 to all of C, right? So if I go back to my master sheet, um, type in a quote, import range, a quote, I'm gonna paste in the spreadsheet link, and quote, a comma, and then in quotes, I'm going to put sheet, sheet one, exactly like how it's spelled, with an exclamation mark, and then I want from everything from A1 to C. Because if you go back to this, it's A1, and I don't want to put a number to end C in case that there's, in case they keep on adding data, right? And then I'm gonna end it in quotes and press enter. Now, what it's gonna have you to do is it's going to say you need to connect these sheets and allow access, because you because you don't want to just have a bunch of sheets and then don't have permissions on it, right? So you wanna make sure you have permission to actually add in the data. So what I would call this sheet is I would call this, maybe my salesperson's name is Michael Jordan, and then maybe I would put in parentheses imported, just so I know that this is imported data, right? And you basically, you can't edit this sheet. If you try to like delete something, it's just gonna go back. If you try to type in it, then it's gonna give an error. Um, the array result was, expand, was not expanded because it would overwrite data in A3. And this error means that you have to go in here to cell A3 and delete whatever is in there. So just press delete and it'll come right back. And then what we can do is we can just duplicate this tab and I'm gonna copy spreadsheet two now and I'll go to the copy and then I'm just gonna go into this formula here and I'm just gonna change everything inside the quotes. I'm gonna highlight it and then I'll paste it and press enter. And then same thing, I have to allow access and then I'm gonna call this one Kobe Bryant. Kobe Bryant imported. And then I'm going to duplicate this one. So basically do this for as many um, sheets or salespersons, whatever that you have. My third sheet's here. LeBron James is my salesperson. I'm going to go in there and highlight everything and press enter. Allow access. Once you allow access once, you can basically use import range on this anywhere else you want in the sheet. So now I'm going to change the name. Okay, so now I have every, Now I have all this data in here, right? Now it's in one sheet, and now I basically just follow um, everything that was that was in this video. So I'll do this quickly. You guys can always go back to that video. So I'll call this one master sheet, master sheet. Now basically all we're gonna do now is we wanna take in, we wanna copy the header. So the header has to be, and it's very important that the header is the same in all of your different spreadsheets, okay? It has to be in the same order and it should be the same exact text. I'm gonna paste it, whoops. I'm going to paste in just sales, salesperson date sales, okay? So this is a, fixed or a static uh, row where we can just change it however we want. And then on the second row, I'll type in equals. I'm gonna go to Michael Jordan and I wanna highlight from, it's hard to tell, but I wanna highlight from from um, 
from A2. Okay, so I'm going to click here, then I'm going to press the left arrow twice. And then to highlight it, you can press Command Shift. Um, make, okay, so go here, highlight it. Command sh Command Shift arrow will help you highlight it, but you can always just type it in. So it's so you can just click anywhere and just highlight anything. And then I want from cell A2 to the end of C. So delete the number here, right? And then, okay, I forgot to put in a bracket. So it's, let me do this again. So equals bracket. And then now I wanna highlight, it's just knowing that I can't exactly get to A2 unless I do this. So A2, just highlight whatever, but I want, I don't want it to end at C13. I wanna go to the very bottom of C. Um, the reason why we're doing A2 is because we don't need the header because we already typed it in because you don't want to bring in the header because then it's going to have multiple headers from every sheet, right? And then if I close the bracket here, this is going to work, right? This is going to bring in one, but we want to bring in multiple. So inside the bracket, before the bracket closes, use a semicolon. Now, semicolon in Google Sheets basically puts all the arrays on top of each other. Um, this would put them... I think a comma puts them next to each other, um, but this puts them on top of each other. So now we go to Kobe Bryant. Now, same thing. I'm going to highlight everything from A2 to C, right? And then another semicolon. And then LeBron James, same thing, A2 to Z, C, sorry. And then now I'm going to press enter. Now, this is basically gonna have it. Um, it looks the same to you, but if you go, but the reason why is because it's bringing, bringing in all of these blank rows, right? So if, you, if I scroll all the way down, here's Kobe's and then here's LeBron James. But we want them, you know, obviously directly on top of each other. Now there's a few ways of doing this. Since you can't edit this data, this is all just reviewing. There's a few ways of doing this. Um, you can use filters, but the way I like to do it is I like to wrap it in a query formula. So after the equal sign, but before the bracket, type in query and then open parentheses and then go to the very, very end and type in a comma and then in quotation marks, type in select all where, oops, okay, so it's probably better to do this in all lowercase. Select all where call one I'll explain what this means later. And the call one needs to be typed exactly like this, which means the capital C and then everything else lowercase. So it's just a weird syntax thing, okay? Where call one is not null, close quotation marks, and then close parentheses. I'll explain this in a second. Now what this does is this formula basically says, I'm gonna query this data, and then I'm gonna select all, the asterisk means all, where call one is not null. Basically means I'm gonna select all the rows where column one is not empty. So pick a column that's always going to have data in it. So let's say let's say that sometimes someone might not put in a date or a sale, then they're not gonna pull in that data. But let's say they always have to put in a salesperson. So you know this is column one, this is column two, this is column three. So you'll know that column one, so it's basically pulling any data where this is filled in. So it's not gonna pull in this row, this row, this row, right? Um, and same here. So if I were to go to Michael Jordan's spreadsheet where I can actually enter in the data, and let's say I put in some data like this, right? This row, even though there is um, there is 11 rows, it's not gonna pull in this row because this one's not filled in. Watch, let me show you what it means. Okay, I will call this one $2,000, $20,000, so you can see $200,000, so you can see the difference, okay? So if I go to my master spreadsheet, my master tab, it's not gonna have a $200,000 one because, and that's because this one is not filled in. But as soon as I type in Michael Jordan in here, or I put anything in it, to be honest with you, I can put anything in it, you'll see $200,000 will pop up in my master sheet. And the way this works is, okay, so now if I were to delete Michael Jordan again, it's going to go away. This, this one's gonna go away. See, it went away on its own. But if I change the formula to say where call two is not null, it's gonna bring it in because there's something in column two. So pick the column, it's usually it's the first column, but everyone's kind of different how they do their spreadsheets. But I always use column one, but it's up to you. Just make sure that you type it in exactly like this. Um, everything else can be like upper, completely all upper or lower, but I would just use lower just so it's easier. Um, so yeah, so that's basically how you do it. You import, 
you first import them into the tabs and then what I would do is I would hide these. So you can just click on this arrow and then just hide it like this. And you can always access it by pressing um, this little menu button down here. There's all the hidden sheets will be in gray or you can go to view hidden sheets and then you can always open them back up. Um, so that's basically how you guys do it. If you guys have any other questions, um, drop them in the comments below. And if you guys wanna learn how to build dashboards inside Google Sheets or Google Data Studio, I'm going to have a course coming out soon. So make sure you check my description to uh, sign up for the course. And then you guys will basically learn how to build awesome dashboards in Google Sheets and Data Studio. All right, guys, make sure to like and subscribe if you guys wanna see more videos like this. Thanks a lot.